I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're talking with Michael Hillman Cook Jr. who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us, uh, well, tell us where you teach, what school, and what subjects. Okay, uh, I teach history at Grant High School, um, world history for 10th grade, and U.S. history for 11th grade. Um, and it's not just a regular class. Um, they're all four different partnership academies. So we have the Geo Academy that is like earth science focused. We have a criminal justice academy where those kids are interested in maybe doing something in law enforcement. We have a sports health academy where the kids learn taping, uh, CPR, uh, all kinds of skills that are not necessarily, they're not necessarily athletes, but they're support in you know, business, in media, uh, and in medical reasons for uh, sports uh, futures. And then we have an arts academy that is Academy of Rhythm, uh, Technology, and Stagecraft that they do like a Tonight Show type presentation three times a week. They do um, YouTube news. Uh, and they're just interested in you know computer design, web page design, that kind of stuff. For those who don't know, explain how academies work. Um, they are partnership academies. So say for the sports health academies, we work with the Kings. We've been on the field with the Raiders. Uh, they did taping for the Sacramento Mountain Lions. Um, and so part of the academy is, is sending them forward into uh, career possibilities. Uh, it was something that I wish I had when, when I was a high school student and I love the opportunity to be a teacher for these kids because, I mean, it's, it's cool stuff. We, they were on a stage for uh, the Tower of Youth Film Festival. Uh, they were doing all those jobs. They were hosts with microphones. They were running cameras. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? Um, with the Raiders, they were down on the field watching the football game, seeing what was happening. They've done the same thing for the Kings. For the Kings, we got to go to Golden One. Uh, they met with kind of a handler who, when these young players come to Sacramento, they're just on the Kings. Uh, they learn, you know, they're young men growing up, you know, for the most part, they learn, you know, how to do these different things. And so the kids got to meet with them. They got to meet with people from Kaiser that work with different athletes. Um, and what kind of an impact does that have on a student when they have that exposure to a career that early? It, it really gives them some kind of connection. Um, I think that, you know, really things that you know, moving forward in education, kids need to be uh, more correct connected to careers and they need to see how they can get to those with technology. Um, you know, over time, books are going to be replaced by tablets and other things, and, and the kids are proficient with the technology. We just need more teachers who do so, too. And, and so, you know, working forward, uh, they need to uh, connect to those careers, and just, you know, they, they come back to you. We took a group to go see Hamilton in San Francisco, and there were kids who, they were more connected to history, and they were connected, you know, through the academy. They were Arts Academy kids. I, I can do that. I want to do that. Not just be a stage performer, but be someone who's running lights, someone who's doing sound, who's doing video. And if they've never had exposure to that, what, what jobs do they think they want to have? Oh, I, you know, they don't know. So world history is, is, is kind of your area of expertise. With today's political climate and everything going on in the world, you know, what are young people talking about in those classes? Sometimes they, they don't know what to talk about um, with our Hmong students. Uh, when I went to high school, uh, I, you could say that you were Hmong and I have no idea. But for our kids to talk about the conflict in Vietnam and, and say that, you know, maybe in some classes a third of our class are Hmong students and say these kids would have not been in this classroom had it not been for this conflict. I mean, it really brings the story that we're talking about to life. And say with a school that's more than 80 years old, um, we have some possibilities to get out of the classroom and go to a bomb shelter. We have the possibility to get out of the classroom and go to a steam boiler room. You know, any way that I can make that history be more than what someone's written in a book is, is what I love to do. So say if the kids are what we can learn from, then we learn from the kids and their story. If the school is something we can learn from, our local community, you know, going back to the partnership academies, that's part of it. Connect to what you can use because there's so much more than the book available. And what's it like when you see a student making that connection, not only with what happened in the past, you know, and connecting it today and, and realizing the relevance? It's, it's hard sometimes to move forward. They get so connected to these different ideas. Can we go back to the bomb shelter? Can we do this thing again? And, and that's part of what's important to education for me. I mean, it's as simple as having the kids write questions. We're going to take the book and we're going to write questions. And they say, can we make it true and false? Can we make it multiple choice? You see them trying to go beyond. They do computer animation for me. They did uh, the story of the jungle by Upton Sinclair. And you know what they created with these little computer animations with guys falling into vats of oil or rats running across pieces of meat. It shows me they've read the book. 
they've gotten this information and they process it in a new skill that giving them a multiple choice test, giving them you know, a photocopy from the book, it, it doesn't serve them and the kind of careers they'll have in the future. Do they bring a lot of discussion of current events into the world class? And, and that can be hard, they do. Does it take uh, you off track it, sometimes? No, no, okay. see the, the chance to go off track is, is part of what's engaging about this. We start the day with some words on the board and those words, you know, they're part of what we're going to do in class that day, but they, in, you know, they, they bring in so many other things because we can look forward. Part of what I have them do is, is look at how this issue that we might be talking about immigration in the 1920s and talk about immigration now. They have, I mean, you know, a, a lot of my kids, you know, have families that are recently immigrated. And so it's, it's very on topic. And, and the chance to take something that might be a little off topic and bring that in is part of what's fun about it. I mean, uh, talking about, I mean, something as crazy as like the creation of Italy. Italy was a bunch of different little kingdoms that came together, and one of those kingdoms was Sardinia. I needed to introduce that word, so I had Sardinia on the board, and I said, tell me anything you know about Sardinia. And one kid thought he was being a joker and said, is that where sardines came from? <laughs> Stop for a moment, took my paw, I said, let's Google check that. And sardines were this you know, business that, that came from this kingdom of Sardinia before Italy was Italy. And so because they came from Sardinia, they were called sardines. They so they just, thought they were making a joke? They thought they were making a joke, but that chance to take something off task. I've worked with continuation kids and, and that chance to take you know, someone who maybe doesn't feel connected to school and, and bring that together, not, not just have a community you know, of this classroom, but of ideas is something that's really important. You know, he thought he was being funny, but it's something that I still remember you know, I just took it, brought it in, made it part of what we do, and, and that's, that's part of the challenge, it's part of the fun. And I'm sure you probably find that, that high schoolers are not short on opinion. <sighs> no, and, and it's, it's a nice chance to talk. Um, you know, sometimes kids come in and, and they repeat what they've heard at home, and you, you've got to value that. And, you know, sometimes kids will make a strong leap, sometimes kids are very rebellious against what they hear at home. Uh, I think part of just dealing with teenagers is, is having that opportunity to come together, to hear what someone has to say, to maybe share what, what you have, and then, and then come to a middle point. And sometimes we're never going to, but they've had a chance to voice their opinion. And you know, sometimes I've, I've really had to examine what I understand. You don't always understand your viewpoints or your ideas until, until someone challenges them. Uh, and, and so it's nice to open you know, the world to these kids of, of what I think it is, but I want them to also interpret things for themselves. So what does it mean to you to be named a Teacher of the Year for your district? It, it means a chance for people to hear about the kind of uh, environment that I work in, the, the kind of kids that I deal with. Uh, it, it, to me, validates uh, some of what I've kind of gone out of a limb to do uh, for my kids that, that my kids, for the most part, would nominate me this, uh, for this for my school. That helped me move up to the district and, and now I'm here talking to you. So uh, I say it, it's validating in a sense that uh, people who, who struggle uh, the kids that I deal with, you know, they may ride RT and then two buses to get to me by 7.30 in the morning. And, and I want them to know that, you know, I'm, I'm there with them, fresh, something that I have worked on to present to them. And, and if they think that much of it, that they'd like me to be Teacher of the Year, then that's great. And so, um, what do you talk about to people who want to be a teacher, who are considering it, what do you tell them? Uh, it's, it's been interesting working uh, there were some essays to move up to the county level and they were very reflective and I think that reflection is a very strong thing if you're trying in 2017 or 2018 to give kids what you were giving them in 2000 you need to do some some uh, reflection if you're telling you're giving kids a worksheet in Spanish class that asks them you know in Spanish you need to know VCR video cassette and diskette in Spanish it's a little out of touch and you need to be reflective about what is a kid in 2017 or 2018, whether it's in history class or Spanish class, what they need to know. How does that connect them to a job? And uh, so I think being reflective is, is a strong point. I think being patient uh, with kids and, and learning their story before you just give everybody the same, you know, the same lesson is, is hard. And uh, I think that you, know, you just really need to stretch and reach. Um, you're not going to change, you're not going to adapt unless you stretch a little bit, unless you go into situations as a teacher that are sometimes difficult because you're putting kids in that kind of situation every day where they <laughs> need to stretch and reach and learn new things and you've got to be willing to do the same thing as a teacher. Well, we want to thank you for your time. We thank want to you. say congratulations. We've been speaking with Michael Hillman Cook, Jr., one of two teachers of the year for the Twin Rivers Unified School District. 
Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.